Has sports science been lying to you? This is true, who can we trust? We're gonna cover all this and we're gonna start right now. So who would be sports scientists? And my throws coach, Dr. Anatoly Bunderchuk, who himself was also a sports scientist, would typically refer to sports scientists as white coats. He had a little bit of a disdain towards specific individuals, even to a point sometimes he would speak poorly on a great sports scientist, Yuri Verkashansky, mainly because he miscited him in chapter four of his book, Super Training with Mel Siff. Anyway, some prominent sports scientists today that are phenomenal would be Dr. Andy Galpin, Dr. Ralph Mann, who himself coached Olympic champion Carmelita Jeter, and he himself has even mentioned that sport coaches typically are 10 years ahead of where science is because they're seeing the trends and they're deep in the trenches with those athletes. But they're also gonna see things more from a holistic macro perspective, right? So research typically is going to be focused on a very narrow concept or a very one-off thing that they can isolate. And that's not how the sports world operates. There is no isolation. We do not operate in a vacuum. And so that's a really key concept that we have to understand when we're studying sports science and when we're studying the sporting trends of different athletes. So have sports scientists contributed to the world of sports performance? And I think this goes without saying absolutely 100%. They've been able to isolate things like the start and having a low heel recovery. They've specifically contributed to decreasing the time in the 100 meters drastically. They've even been able to show why certain things in training actually work. Think about weightlifting base training to improve power output. Think about post-activation potentiation and explaining why that works and how that can increase neural drive. Sports scientists have even shown us how endurance-based training works. So think about long, slow distance and what that does for mitochondrial volume versus high intensity interval training and sprint interval training and how that can increase and improve mitochondrial respiration. These are all things that sports scientists have been able to explain to us as sport coaches. And then top that off with nutritional research. This is where, yes, nutritional research can improve for sure, but there's also been a ton of research that we've been able to carry over from the nutritional science-based world and carry that over into that practical world of sports performance. So the argument for sport coaches is that, again, we don't live in a vacuum. Instead, we have to see things from that global perspective and analyze variables that are gonna impact our athletes and our athletes' recovery, specifically things even outside of the sporting world, like life. Sport coaches have to take in other variables like school, family, social life, having girlfriends, playing video games. These are all different factors that they have to bring in and understand when they're laying out an entire peak program. So other limitations that sports scientists have are gonna be based around time. So if you have a sports coach, you might have five, six, seven years with a specific athlete. And the other factor goes along with how well they follow testing protocols. A lot of sports scientists struggle to get their individual test subjects to do the tests properly. Whereas sport coaches, yes, we still have that issue with our athletes not following suit with exactly how they're supposed to be trained, but it's a little bit easier to hold them accountable. So coaches have to master the art of coaching by taking in feedback from the athletes and then analyzing all that feedback to help enhance their overall performance in competition. So athletes adapt differently based off their genetics and their previous sport disposition. And all of that is what's going to be taken in on a regular basis as part of the formula to lead to proper peaking. So the problem with sports science is it's always speaking in very specific absolutes. Machines are bad, hypertrophy might be bad. We should always focus on metabolic adaptations. We should always focus on neurological adaptations. Technique isn't that valuable. Technique's incredibly valuable. These are all absolutes that we've seen in different research papers, but in reality, they're all right and they're all wrong to a point. So should we ignore all science or how can coaches actually find that pivotal balance between sports scientists and actually practical coaching? So as coaches, we need to lay out that global training system. What's that global training system that we're using? And then how can we periodize that training system and break it down into blocks and then look at 
what rep schemes carry over to specific characteristics that athletes need in specific sports, what exercises are needed with those specific rep schemes to carry over to those specific sports. And that's really been provided by sports scientists. We know that if we have an athlete like a shot putter, they need to have a ton of power output. So we know an exercise that could help with power output behind the neck jerk. That's gonna improve their overall coordination, their overall rate of coordination. Then we know that they shouldn't be doing the rep scheme of 15 reps, they should typically be doing two to five reps. Now, sports coaches can use their intuition to figure that out, but we can also prove the accuracy of that assumption through sports science. The most important thing that coaches need to understand is that we can establish those key concepts, those key parameters that we need to use to improve performance overall with our athletes. But we need to learn that directly from the greatest teacher. And the greatest teacher is our athletes within our own training system. So as coaches, we need to take notes on all the different variables. We have to understand things like, how is the athlete reacting to technical coordination movements? How are they handling absolute strength? How are they handling different accessories that we're giving them? How are they handling plyometric work? And even how are they applying nutrition into their recovery? And then what's their psychological aspect on a day-to-day -day basis? And that's where it's very key to determine where those lessons from sports science can then be applied into your own training system. And one of those key concepts is to not change cherry pick research, but instead look at meta-analysis, look at overall results, and see how you can apply those direct results from the meta-analysis into your training to help improve your overall training system. And all of this comes back to establishing a great circle of friends inside your coaching realm, and also a great circle of sports scientists that you can reach out to and pose questions to help improve your overall performance within your training system. But ultimately, the number one guide that we have to follow is the reaction of our athletes. If we study our athletes and we get feedback from our athletes, our training system is going to improve drastically over a long period of time. Don't ignore science, but instead learn how to read research properly. Someone like Lane Norton does a phenomenal job on helping coaches learn and understand research and then how to take that and carry it into their own training system. So the key factor here is to create a coaching blueprint in a training system and then implement your athletes into that specific system. And then after you implement your athletes into your blueprint, you have to be able to learn from each individual. And then take that science, take the absolutism that could possibly occur in those specific research papers and then look at it through the lens of your own coaching blueprint. So the key is to establish a great circle of coaches and a great circle of sports scientists and then understand that typically the art of coaching along with that mixture of seeing science through your own coaching blueprint is almost always gonna be what wins. So if you want more deep dives into sports science and sports research, Click on the link down below and head over to our podcast, the Masters of Sport podcast, to help you have a better comprehension for direct application as a coach. And if you want information on how we lay out our sports performance, click on the link, go to garagestrength.com, and you can pick up the Sports Performance Bible. It's a book and course that's going to help you as a coach understand how to apply all these different principles into sports performance development. And remember, if you want to develop champions, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.